Good morning. It's Thursday and time again for Bible study. Amen. Today's topic is going to be praise God for what you got. Not grammatically correct, but that's the title. Amen. Please share with your friends and family. Let everyone know that it's Thursday in Bible study. Also, don't forget we study from the New Living Translation. And the purpose of our Bible study is to encourage the people of God with the word of God. Amen. And today's topic, as I said, is praise God for what you got. And we're in Exodus chapter 16, verse 1 through 35. Exodus 16, verse 1 to 35. New Living Translation. Let's get going. So then the whole community of Israel set out for Ilium and journeyed into the wilderness of sin. Between Ilium and Mount Sinai, they arrived there on the 15th day of the second month, one month after leaving the land of Egypt. There, too, the whole community of Israel complained about Moses and Aaron. So we already start off on the wrong foot. Amen. Amen. When people are complaining, it's never good. Let's move on to verse 3. If only the Lord had killed us back in Egypt, they moaned. There we sat around pots filled with meat and ate all the bread we wanted. But now you have brought us into this wilderness to starve us all to death. Now, mind you, Moses got these people out of slavery, right? 400 years. And they're on their way to the promised land, right? They have covering by day and light by night. But no, we got to find things to complain about. Let's move on. Then the Lord said to Moses, look, I'm going to rain down food From heaven for you. Each day the people can go out and pick up as much food as they need for that day. I will test them in this to see whether or not they will follow my instructions. On the sixth day, they will gather food. And when they prepare it, there will be twice as much as usual. God can take your small stuff, supernaturally touch it, bless it, and it will be twice. I'm going to say it again. It will be twice as much as what you had before. Listen, we don't have to look at things in the physical. We need to learn to look at things in the spiritual, the way God does. Amen. Let's continue on. So Moses and Aaron said to all the people of Israel, by evening, you will realize it was the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt. In the morning, you will see the glory. Oh, come on, somebody of the Lord, because he has heard your complaints, which are against him, not us. Children of God, when you complain against God's leadership, you're not complaining against the physical person you're looking at. You're complaining against God. Like I said, take your eyes off the physical and keep your eyes on the spiritual because God is spirit and those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. It's never about the flesh. It's about the spirit. What is going on in the spiritual realm? Who is that for? I'm not sure, but I hope you receive it in Jesus' name. So the so Moses, I'm going to do six again. So Moses and Aaron said to all the people of Israel, by evening, you will realize it was the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt In the morning, you will see the glory of the Lord because he has heard your complaints, which are against him and not against us. What have we done that you should complain against us? Like, really? Moses is like, really? 
I came, I got y'all, and you still find things to complain about. We have a human nature that doesn't see good. All we see is evil. All we see is negative. We never see the positive. It's sometimes it has to be trained for us to look at the positive. And that training comes from the Holy Spirit. Then Moses added, the Lord will give you meat to eat in the evening and bread to satisfy you in the morning for he has heard all your complaints against him. I want you to hear me clearly. What have we done? Yes, your complaints are against the Lord, not against us. Listen, children of God, recognize, amen? Verse nine, then Moses said to Aaron, announce this to the entire community of Israel. Present yourselves before the Lord, for he has heard your complaining. And as Aaron spoke to the whole community of Israel, they looked out towards the wilderness. There they could see the awesome glory of the Lord in the cloud. Then the Lord said to Moses, I have heard the Israelites complaints. Now tell them in the evening you will have the meat to eat. And in the morning you will have all the bread you want. Then you will know that I am the Lord your God. Oh, come on, somebody. Do you know that the Lord is your God? Do you know he will give you the meat to eat? Oh, come on, somebody. Do you know that he will supply all your needs because he is a provider and it will be done sometimes supernaturally? Because it's not about what's going on in the physical. It's all about what God's going to do in the spirit. Oh, come on, somebody. Listen. That evening, verse 13, verse 13, that evening, vast numbers of quail flew in and covered the camp. And the next morning, the area around the camp was wet with dew. When the dew evaporated, a flaky substance as fine as frost blanketed the ground. The Israelites were puzzled when they saw it. What is it? They asked each other. They had no idea what it was. And Moses told them, it is the food the Lord has given you to eat. These are the Lord's instructions. Each household should gather as much as it needs. Picks up two quarts for each person in your tent. So the people of Israel did as they were told. Some gathered a lot, some gathered only a little. But when they measured it out, everyone had just enough. Those who gathered a lot had nothing left over, and those who gathered only a little had enough. Each family had just what is needed. Now, mind you, God is the master at providing what is needed. When you think you don't have enough, know that God will Provide what is needed. Amen. Verse 19. Then Moses told them, do not keep any of it until morning. But some of them didn't listen and kept some of it until morning. But then it was full of maggots and had a terrible smell. Moses was very angry with them. Remember, saints, obedience is better than sacrifice. Trust God when you don't understand. Trust God with something new. Trust God that he's already planned and has structured and has already altered situations to fit your needs. Oh, come on, somebody. Trust God. Verse 21. After this, the people gather the food morning by morning, each family according to its need. And as the sun became hot, the flakes they had not picked up melted and disappeared. Look at God. He even does housekeeping. Amen. He melted everything. So nothing was left gathering and smelling or turning maggots. Oh, come on, somebody. Know that God is into the details. Everything. 
He has already worked out a way for it to dissipate or for it to increase depending on your need. Verse 22. On the sixth day, they gathered twice as much as usual, four quarts for each person instead of two. Then all the leaders of the community came and asked Moses for an explanation. He told them, this is what the Lord commanded. Tomorrow will be a day of complete rest, a holy Sabbath day set apart for the Lord. So bake or boil as much as you want today and set aside what is left for tomorrow. Verse 24. So they put some aside until morning, just as Moses has commanded. And in the morning, the leftover food was wholesome and good without maggots or odor. Moses said, eat this food today for today is a Sabbath day dedicated to the Lord. There will be no food on the ground. Today, you may gather the food for six days, but the seventh day is the Sabbath. There will be no food on the ground that day. Some of the people went out anyway on the seventh day, but they found no food. Being disobedient, not listening. Are you listening to the Spirit of God when he talks to you? The Spirit of God is talking all the time. Are you listening, children? Are you putting yourself in a place where you can quietly hear from God? Verse 28, the Lord asked Moses, how long will these people refuse to obey my commands and instructions? Verse 29, they must realize that the Sabbath is the Lord's gift to you. That is why he gives you a, a two day supply on the sixth day. So there will be enough for two days. On the Sabbath day, you must eat, stay in your place. Do not go out to pick a food on the seventh day. So the people did not gather any food on the seventh day. The Israelites called the food manna. It was white like coriander seed and it tasted like honey wafers. Trust God to give us something that is sweet. Amen. Something that is pleasing to the palate. Amen. Then Moses says, this is what the Lord has commanded. Fill a two core container with manna to preserve it for your descendants. Then later generations will be able to see the food I gave you in the wilderness when I set you free from Egypt. Verse 33. Moses says to Aaron, get a jar and fill it with two quarts of manna. Then put it in a sacred place before the Lord to preserve it for all future generations. Aaron did just as the Lord has commanded Moses. He eventually placed it in the Ark of the Covenant in front of the stone tablets inscribed with the terms of the covenant. So the people of Israel ate manna for 40 years until they arrived at the land where they would settle. They ate manna until they came to the border of the land of Canaan. Ooh. Children of God. God provides. God provides. He provided. Praise God for what you got. Because God knows all your needs. And he will provide. And sometimes we don't even recognize that it's God's provision. And it is. We, we are so accustomed to things being a certain way. Looking a certain way. Doing a certain thing. All the time. Every day. The same way that when God does something new and something different, we complain. Stop the complaining and thank God for what you got. Hebrews 4, 13 says, nothing in all creation is hidden from God. Everything is naked and exposed before his eyes. And he is the one to whom we are accountable. 
Philippians 3.10. I want, I want to know Christ and experience the mighty power that raised him from the dead. I want to suffer with him, sharing in his death. Listen, we need to ask the right questions. We need to pray the right kind of prayer. We need to stay focused. You see what's going on in the elements right now. Earthquakes and tornadoes and wars and all these different things that are is going on with people and the devil worshiping and all the, the things that is sacrilegious. We see the time it is. We know the season that we're in. Stay close to God. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Not on man and what's going on in the world, but on the Lord. Psalms 37, 4 says, take delight in the Lord and he will give you your heart's desire. Psalm 147, 4, New Living Translation as usual says, he counts the stars and call them all by name. So if God knows every star in the sky and he called them all by name, do you think you can have a concern that he can't help you with? Do you think you can have a need and he can provide for you? Do you think you can get into a place that he can reach you and send you help? There's nothing too big or too hard or too impossible for God. You need to hold on to God's unchanging hands. We see in 1 Corinthians 8, 3, but the person who loves God is the one whom God recognizes. Are you demonstrating that you know God? Are you demonstrating that you love God? Are you allowing God to love you? Oh, come on, somebody. Are you? Are you? Where are you when God is providing? Where are you when God is looking for you? Where are you? Are you where you need to be? Are you in a state of gratitude and thanking God for what you got? 1 John 3, 19 and 20 says, Our actions will show that we belong to the truth, so we'll be confident when we stand before God. Even if we feel guilty, God is greater than our feelings, and he knows everything. And lastly, Psalms 37, 5, New Living Translation says, Commit everything you do to the Lord. Trust him, and he will help you. Let's go to prayer. Uh, Lydia, Ayana, Emmett, Starlet, Giovanni, Owen, Starlet, Shackleford family, Corey, Jordan, Cassandra Graves, Georgette, Norma Reed, Anthony Walker, Julian Walker family, Elijah, Elijah Echo, Don Cosby, Lee McGee, Maria Rice, Patrick Linton, Deacon Isabel Roberts. We've got two James and the Harris family. We are also praying for Israel, Nigeria, Kenya, Ethiopia, South Africa, Puerto Rico, we're praying for the Ukraine, United States, and Russia. We're praying for Turkey. We're praying for Andre, Victoria, Justin, Margaret, and family, Maxine, Seneca, Brinkley, Tracy, Brinkley, Lucetta, Robin Hall. We're praying for Shackerford family, the Grant family, Paulette Redwood, Lucinda Downer, Linda McCall, and Philbert, Wanda Bradley, Robin Bradley, Trixie Dobson, Kate Wilson, Somalian Democratic Congo. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, you know all things about all of us. We are naked in front of you. We thank you for this opportunity just to be reminded of that. We are thankful because we, now we can thank you and praise you with a sincere and clean heart. Forgive us of our sins, Lord God. Forgive us when we forget who we are. Forgive us, Lord God, for complaining, Lord God. We thank you for always providing. Bless now, Lord God, all that you do for us. Every person that was mentioned and all those that we have forgot to mention, we pray Pray for each and every one, Lord God, as they also have a spirit of thankfulness and look to you 
the author and the finisher of their faith. Bless us, Lord God, I pray. It's in Jesus' holy and matchless name we pray. And we say amen, amen, and amen. God bless you, children of God. See you same time next week. Bye-bye.